What's up guys, my name is Khan and we're back today with more Scrap Mechanic and today we're looking at a visualization of an awesome sort of mathematical problem and that is the Monty Hall problem. I believe Monty Hall was a game show host and he had a sort of three door challenge and the challenge was really simple. Contestants were allowed to pick one of three doors. Now behind one of the doors was a car or some sort of a prize and behind the other two doors was nothing. When you pick one of the three doors, which we'll do right here, let's pick this door on the left, then it reveals one of the other two doors that is something that you didn't want. It doesn't show you the car, but it reveals a door that is a blank door, a door that in this case has a red square. And the question is, do you switch your original choice? So you can see our original choice is this door on the left. Do we switch to the door in the middle and do we pick the next door? Now, the answer to this is yes, you always want to switch over because believe it or not, there's actually a 66% chance that the car will be behind this door, the prize will be behind this door, and only a 33% chance the car will be behind this door. A lot of people think that it's just split, there's only two options, it's 50-50, but in fact it's not. It's 66 and 33%, give or take, and you can see if we switch and we pick and boom, we actually won the car and we've gotten one win there. So I decided to visualize this problem and I made an entire logic system that allows us to basically duplicate the Monty Hall problem and do it as many times as we want. And if we continue to go along the pattern, we should actually see this percentage go from 50% to either the 66 or the 33. Now there's a ton of videos online where you can go and look up how this problem works and you can see the explanations behind it from an actual mathematical standpoint but I decided to make a physical version of it just because I really wanted to go and run it a bunch of different times and see, will we get to these percentages? So in this case, on the first round, we switched the door. So we're gonna switch again. So it says we've uh, we picked this middle one. Now it's revealed the one on the right, which is obviously a bad door. So now we're gonna switch over to the one on the left and we're gonna reveal again. And oh, look at that, we're actually two for two now, fantastic. So let's pick a door again. It doesn't matter which one we pick. It randomizes every time. It changes which one is correct. Now, of course, there is a chance that we could pick it right off the bat. Pick it on the right. This could be the prize door. So let's hit the red. It's going to reveal. Okay, it reveals the middle one as being a dud. So let's go to the far left and switch. And oh, look, it's actually a dud. We've only got two for three and 66%. So this actually is right on point with where it should be. Now, of course, the more we play this, the more the statistic will change, and it should eventually, even after hundreds and hundreds of attempts, get to that 66 if we always switch, and if we don't always switch, it'll go to 33. So let's just speed through a few rounds here, and then we'll take a look at how this system actually works. We'll just keep switching. That one we won, perfect, so uh, up to 60% now. And again, we will uh, we'll should see that statistic stabilize over time. We won that one as well, 66.6%, .6%. look at that. And we've only done a few attempts. Now, there's no math that forces this. In behind, there's simply a random number generator. Uh, every time you pick a new round, it'll start a new round, and it adds one to the total rounds you've gotten. And then it randomizes which one of the doors has the winning prize behind it. When you click and select the door you want, it then evaluates, okay, there's two other doors that you didn't pick. Which one has the prize? If one of them has the prize, it'll reveal the other door. And if neither of them has the prize, then it'll randomly pick which door to expose to the player. So of course, we've picked this middle door initially. Uh, it reveals this right door. Let's pick that left one again. And look at that, boom, 75%. Oh, down exactly 66%. So it's amazing how this will work. It will roughly come out to that percentage. It does sometimes jump around, but it's really cool how this works. And we'll just do a bunch more attempts here. Again, we gotta really sort of do it, but we'll get this up to, let's say, do a total of 20 uh, and see what the percentage is at at that point. Again, constantly switching, and then we'll change tactics, and we'll go to the version where we don't switch, we always stick with our original guess, and you'll see that the percentage changes. So actually, we're doing really good here, 76%, that's amazing. Again, the statistic only really works, though, if you constantly make the same decision. So here, we're always switching, which will actually show us what the percentage is, and 70% right now, uh, 70.58, so there we go. Again, we'll switch, and look at that, we won that. We're doing really, really good, 72%. Oh, we lost that one. Amazing. 66.6%. .6%. So after 21 attempts, we're still at that even 66.6%. Uh, .6%. It's amazing how math actually, you know, works in statistics. Even in a physical game like Scrap Mechanic, with nothing but a random number generator and a bunch of number logic to control it, it still behaves the same way as you would see in real life. It's absolutely awesome, and uh, it's just fantastic to see. Now, of course, uh, we won that one. 71.42%, 68%. 
Uh, reveal, let's switch to the right. No, we won, perfect. So again, constantly switching, definitely the way to go. It reveals that left one, boom. And the reason why is when you look at this problem and when you start the problem, the statistic is 33% per door, right? No matter what, you have a one in three chance of winning. If you just pick a door and then you were to reveal, you'd have a one in three chance of getting the prize. So if you pick this door, you have a 33% chance on this door, but the other two doors combined have a 66% chance. Now, when you reveal one of the fake doors, you don't change that percentage. That percentage stays the same. So instead of, let's say, so here we go. We pick this middle door, we hit the reveal button, so it's revealed this. Now, this was part of the 66% shared by these two outside doors. So in turn, all the 66% gets transferred to this door here, which is why if we switch, it's always beneficial. And most of the time, you will win if you switch. So let's go new round. Let's reset the score completely. Uh, hit new round again. There we go. So we're on the first round. Now, this time, we're not going to switch at all. And you'll see the percentage should go down towards the 33, 35% range, just like before we were in the kind of 65 to 70% range. And mathematically, this should work every time. I will, of course, upload this to the workshop. It's a really, really cool demo. And uh, I just, I was watching a TV show, actually, and the TV show featured the Monty Hall problem, and the characters were arguing about which was the right thing, because a lot of people say, well, it doesn't matter if you switch or not, it shouldn't make a difference, and then some people say it does, and I understand the math behind why it wouldn't, but I've never actually been able to run a hundred or so tests and prove that the math will always work out that way. So, we'll pick a door, we'll pick the door on the left, and press that, reveal, so we're not going to switch at all. We're going to keep our choice with the left door, and uh, we're just going to press the button again, and we'll see what happens. So, 33% of the time, yeah, so we lost that. Okay, new round again. Uh, we'll pick the middle door this time. So, again, we're only on a 1 in 3 chance of winning, and uh, lost that one again. Okay, 0 for 2, that's not good. Pick this middle door again, why not? Reveal. Oh, nope, still didn't do it. Okay, this is, this is not looking good. We should eventually win. Statistically, yeah, there we go, perfect. What's that, 20%? Oh, that's not, that's not looking good. Okay, come on, math. Oh, there we go. Is that 33%? Look at that, 33%. Now, of course, in case you're wondering how this works with logic, it's really, really simple. The logic in the back, uh, it just evaluates with a random number generator. So in the mod pack, there is an RNG sort of random number generator. And uh, if we look, whenever we press new round, it recalculates a new random number from that generator between zero and one, which we can look at really as a percentage. And then based on that, it goes, if it's between zero and 0.33, it goes to this door. If it's between 0.33 and 0.66, it goes to this door. And then 0.66 and point and one, I guess, it goes to this door. And uh, you pick a door and then it evaluates, checks, okay, you've picked this door. Let's check the other two, make sure. And of course, it, uh, it just uses a bunch of AND gates to sort of complete those checks. And we're so far, we're at 16%. This is really bad. We're only on two for 12. Uh, not really good at picking. There we go. That's that's good. Three, twenty-three percent. Okay. Pick that right door again. It seems like it was lucky. No, no, it really wasn't. All right, all right. Reveal. Don't pick. Oh, this one's. We're getting closer. We're getting twenty-seven percent now. Five wins out of eighteen rounds. Uh, again, let's run it for a few more rounds. We'll just kind of speed through them. Reveal there. Perfect. That one's a nice win. I'll uh, pick the middle. Okay. Reveal again. Okay. No, that's not good. Thirty percent. So we're getting closer. Uh, pick a new door. Oh, look at that. We won that one. 7 out of 21. 33% there after 21 rounds. So you can see it's really, really cool how this problem can be visualized. We're actually doing really good now. 38%. Uh, it should, again, like I said, if we do hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of tries, it should go down to that 33%. Uh, 37, but, you know, we were down to like 20 for a while there. Now we're doing a lot better. Oh, up over almost 40%. 39%. Wow. But again, with the other one, we were at like 70% as well. So it does fluctuate a little bit. And uh, of course, there is a chance that you could win every single round if you just pick the right door every single time. That would be absolutely amazing uh, because you should only be able to do that one out of every three times. But again, it, it is 100% possible just to be perfect and pick all the doors. And of course, I mean, the easiest way to do that really, so you can see we, we won there, door on the right. Uh, we could just walk around back and cheat. Oh, it's door on the right again. Okay, perfect. So we'll just pick that. And uh, you can see now we're just kind of, this is how we fake stats. I did leave all this stuff in the back just so you can kind of see how it goes. So we can actually run around from the back here. Uh, there is a glass panel to sort of protect it. But if we click new round, which we just did, it actually executes 
this random number here. There's a bunch of like timers and stuff. This is all really because it has to close the doors before it switches the random number generator. When I originally made this, it was switching the LED panel. So these are just LED blocks. They take an RGB input. It's kind of it's kind of a mess, but really it's not that big of a deal, but they take an RGB input. So one of them is triggered on. That's this bit right here, which says this one is the winning solution and the other two are triggered off. And then of course, these three bits up top are the player selection bits. So it determines which door the player has picked at any point in time. Uh, these memory panels, they're just really to wire up the ASCII display. Really simple stuff there. As you kind of go through the memory, it just, each one holds a different number value, which in turn gives you a different display message. So the first one's like, pick which would be like p i c k uh space and then a and then space and then door d o o r and then a period so that just kind of stores all the data in that and then when you go to the next step it just increments this to one which says revealing and that would change the values behind all these so really really cool stuff again a lot easier to do with the number logic rather than with straight binary logic makes this whole thing a lot more compact but we pick a new door it uh, uses these timers to close the doors and then it picks a new random number here it compares the random number so you can see this indicates it's less than that certain value so it's less than 0.33 or greater than 0.66 i mean and uh, of course it opens up that one over there so it lets us know that boom that is in fact the door we have to pick now as a player we can pick which door we want so let's say we chose let's say we chose the real door so we chose this door uh, we picked green, so we picked the right door, which means it's got to reveal one of these two doors. So here's that red button from the side. We'll press that. It's going to increment a step. That's what this does here. And uh, it actually increments that step and then sends that signal to this AND gate here. So there's two sets of sort of AND gates here. This one checks the conditions when you've picked the correct door, and this one checks the conditions when you've picked the incorrect door. So when you've picked the incorrect door, it's pretty easy. It has to reveal the other door that you didn't pick, obviously. So if we pick this door, it can't reveal the winning door, so it has to reveal that one. And that's what these conditions over here check. And then these AND gates here, they check, okay, if you pick the winning door, well, what does this random number generator say? And this one just checks simply greater than 0.5, less than 0.5, and whichever one it is determines the door on the left or the door on the right. Then, of course, passes these conditions all the way through to the win checker, which determines, hey, the player has picked which door, uh, which door have we revealed? So we've revealed this door on the right. And uh, now if the player doesn't pick a door and we keep that, it should go reveal all the doors. And it checked, it said, you picked the correct door. So this matched this, these two bits lined up, which in turn goes through these AND gates here, pulses through, comes back around and adds one to the score. It's a little bit complicated, but I assure you it's not that bad. But of course, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. I think it's a really, really cool problem. Like I said, I was watching a TV show, saw this problem and thought, I really want to visualize like a hundred attempts to see if we can actually, you know, see what happens and uh, see if statistics hold true, which turns out it does. And uh, it's amazing that math is a real thing. I mean, you know, for all those people who think math is fake, uh, turns out math is real, confirmed by the Monty Hall problem in Scrap Mechanic. But of course, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. If there's any other sort of cool mathematical problems you'd like to see in Scrap Mechanic, I definitely want to think of a few more of these. I love this kind of thing where it's just like a really simple logic creation just to prove one really simple point and uh it's just really really cool and i really really like it but of course let me know what you guys think in the comments down below i will upload this to the workshop with some really simple instructions if you want to try the demo yourself i think it's a really really cool build and uh, i think it's a lot of fun especially if you are confused about this problem and if you just read about the problem and think about it and can't really visualize it this is a definitely a great way to help yourself sort of understand how the statistics work but of course let me know what you guys think in the comments down below but while you're at it hit that like button hit that subscribe button and as always, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and we'll see y'all next time.